order to talk about the relevance of public policies. Thank you very much for uh, meeting, and we greet those of you who are following the session via streaming on this World Conference on Cultural Policies. I am Natalia El Micro. I am a Director General for Culture of OEI in order to, reach, to strengthen cultural policies for education, science, and policy. So I am honored to monitor rate this panel and I greet Minister uh, Chair of the conference and ministers representing the countries we will have during this session. As you very well know, we are uh, spending three days talking about the relevance of culture in order to consider it as a world a public good from which to strengthen the cultures across our countries and uh, well it is a wonderful time now in Mexico to revisit the relevance of culture and to underscore that it is a key pillar for the integral and sustainable development of our countries. But this would not be possible without pol public policies that are renewed and strengthened because we are now meeting after lots of experience, but of course, after experiencing a world crisis that was and still is COVID-19. So today, more than ever, countries need to implement public policies that are renewed and uh, strengthened, and that is exactly what we are talking about this morning. So to start the session, I welcome His Excellency Mr. Elio Ferraz Oliveira, Special Secretary for Culture from Brazil. Good morning, or good afternoon, rather. Boa tarde a todos. Buenas tardes a todos. Primeiramente, gostaria de agradecer às autoridades presentes, especialmente aos organizadores do evento, que fizeram um brilhante papel na organização desta conferência. A hospitalidade mexicana nos fez sentir acolhidos desde nossa chegada no país. Não poderia deixar, igualmente, de agradecer à Unesco por todo o suporte dado e pela excelente condução das atividades. Retornamos aqui para mais uma edição da Conferência Mundial de Políticas Culturais e Desenvolvimento Sustentável, com o objetivo de promover uma reflexão global e de ancorar a cultura na agenda das políticas públicas mundiais, demonstrando a força e a importância da cooperação cultural internacional. Neste painel, tratamos de tema de grande relevância, políticas culturais fortalecidas e renovadas. É fundamental recordar que o fortalecimento da política pública perpassa pela constante revisão e adaptação dos marcos legais. A sociedade se transforma com rapidez e a pandemia catalisou esse processo, ampliando a digitalização e evidenciando as vulnerabilidades do setor cultural diante das crises, que impactam sobretudo os pequenos e médios empreendedores. Além disso, para promover a sustentabilidade do financiamento da agenda cultural, é importante que o poder público atue em parceria com o setor privado, de forma a permitir a manutenção da difusão e do acesso à cultura. Hoje, falarei um pouco sobre o fortalecimento do normativo legal brasileiro e sobre o financiamento sustentável das políticas culturais em parceria com o setor privado. No Brasil, de acordo com a Constituição Federal, é papel do Estado garantir a todos o pleno exercício do, dos direitos culturais e o acesso às fontes da cultura nacional, bem como apoiar e incentivar a valorização e a difusão das manifestações culturais. Para isso, estabelece-se igualmente a adoção do Plano Nacional de Cultura de duração plurianual, visando o desenvolvimento da cultura do país e, do país, e a integração das ações do poder público, com base nesse sólido marco legal. O governo brasileiro conduz a construção de uma política pública por meio de intenso processo participativo que envolve a população, o setor privado, as diversas instâncias do governo em seus níveis local, estadual e federal, bem como instituições de pesquisa. Ademais, conforme estabelece a Constituição, revisões periódicas das normativas são realizadas de forma a atender os anseios da população e a buscar a democratização do acesso ao direito constitucional de cultura. Neste sentido, destaco a revisão da Lei de Incentivo à Cultura, o mais importante mecanismo de financiamento da cultura no Brasil, fruto de parcerias entre a administração pública e o setor privado. 
A nova redação passou a incentivar o patrocínio de projetos inovadores de empreendedores culturais iniciantes, para que se consolidem no mercado. Da forma, dessa forma, a lei que funciona com base na renúncia fiscal e na captação de recursos privados passou a prever que a cada um milhão de reais patrocinado, o patrocinador terá que destinar 10% para um projeto nunca antes financiado. Essa medida promove o acesso ao financiamento dos pequenos e médios empreendimentos culturais, bem como incentiva a aplicação de recursos privados por meio do mecenato para o desenvolvimento de projetos culturais, promovendo conjuntamente o acesso à difusão cultural. É importante ressaltar que os projetos culturais têm o condão de fortalecer e de promover transformações socioeconômicas na sociedade, gerando inclusão, emprego e renda. Agora, apresentarei o caso de uma das milhares de instituições apoiadas por, por meio deste mecanismo de incentivo à cultura, que é o Instituto Bacarelli, localizado em uma das maiores favelas do Brasil. Esse projeto social é custeado 100% com recursos incentivados por meio da lei de incentivo. 100% with the area of culture totally approximately of 2.2 million dollars in funding. It impacts the lives of more than 1,800 young people in vulnerable situations who have access since their childhood to popular and art music classes, allowing them to enter the labor market as professional musicians. Finally, this project, and to ensure renew and strengthen public policies, there needs to be a solid and well-built regulatory framework which must be constantly adapted to meet rapid social transformations. In addition, governance and the construction of public policies must be based on participatory processes carried out together with civil society and government. This is our contribution debate, and before I say goodbye, I would like to highlight that culture transforms realities and transforms lives. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias al Secretario Especial de Cultura de Brasil. Y en este momento vamos a dar paso a un video con el mensaje del Ministro de Cultura y Turismo de China, Excelentísimo Now Señor. Now we will have His Excellency Mr. Hu Heping, Minister of Culture and Tourism from China. 尊敬的主席, 女士们, 先生们, 朋友们, 很高兴参加世界文化政策与可持续发展大会。联合国大会通过重要支撑作用百年变局与世纪疫情交织叠加全球发展遭遇严重挫折国际社会迫切期待实现更加公平欢迎联合国教科文组织设立四年一度的世界文化政策论坛愿会同联合国教科文组织和各国积极参与国际文化规则制定
以联合申报文化遗产、开展文物保护合作等工作为抓手，持续推动全球文化发展、文明互鉴。三是以文化赋能可持续发展，中方愿同各国加强协作，共同推动文化创新，提升文化建设数字化、智能化、网络化水平。发挥文化产业作为绿色产业、幸福产业的属性和特点，为可持续发展提供更多新的突破口、增长点。女士们、先生们、朋友们，文明因多样而交流，因交流而互鉴，因互鉴而发展。中方愿与各国一道，携手联合国教科文组织，践行平等、互鉴、对话。包容文明观，沿着相互尊重、和中共济、和和共生的人类文明发展正确道路阔步前行，为构建人类命运共同体做出新的、更大的贡献。最后，预祝本次大会圆满成功，谢谢大家。Thank you very much, Minister of Culture and Tourism. Now we welcome the Minister of Tourism and Culture from Gambia, Hamad Bach. Your Excellencies, the UNESCO Director General, and our dear host minister, ministers and colleagues, and heads of delegates. I will begin my statement by noting the warm welcome that has been reserved for us by our host the people and government of Mexico, and the state that, is, that it is highly appreciated. Our thanks also goes to UNESCO Director General and her staff for the wonderful invitation extended to the Republic of the Gambia. Distinguished delegates, we have come a long way from the Gambia to attend this August gathering because the government of His Excellency President Adam Mabaro puts a high premium on culture and cultural expressions and heritage. Since we assume office in 2017, we have worked. We have worked with partners like UNESCO to elaborate a new arts and culture policy to replace the obsolete 1988 policy. The new policy was initiated via a true stakeholders consultation process that culminated in the new Gambia Arts and Culture Policy 2019-2029. My sincere commendation goes to UNESCO for their support during this entire process of having a new responsive, gender-friendly, and inclusive cultural policy. Honorable Chairperson, and distinguished girl delegates, but what comes after a new cultural policy has, has been done? That's a question. The answer is simply action. The new policy will be enriched by a strategy of cultural action which takes cognizance of the government's desire to promote, protect, and valorized the Gambia's cultural assets to respond to needs of the day, such as youth jobs, tourism promotion, community anim animation, and foster unity in diversity. This is why our government has continued to work with UNESCO to strengthen the conservation and the community involvement at our UNESCO heritage sites, such as the Stone Circle of Senegambia and the Kunta Kinte Island and related sites. In this regard, the coming months Works will begin for the rehabilitation of the Kunta Kinte Island, UNESCO World Heritage Site, thanks to the World Bank $68 million grant to the government of the Gambia. The island will be en enhanced by anti-erosion measures, and the outlining communities of Jufre and Albreda will get tourism-related infrastructure to maximize their benefits from the heritage sites. Late last week, the Gambian National Assembly or the Gambian Parliament unanimously ratified the 2001 UNESCO Convention on the Water, or on, on the protection of on the water cultural heritage. In this journey, UNESCO gave us technical support. We have, a, we are happy to state that all deputies voted for the ratification unanimously, which is another indication of our great political will for heritage. We will work to ensure that in the coming days and weeks. Our efforts will be directed towards ratifying the UNESCO Convention of 1970. Distinguished delegates, UNESCO has remained a dependable partner in protecting the Gambia cultural heritage as seen in the above intervention and the ongoing UNESCO-supported projects in inventorying of 
Gambian intangible cultural assets, and we are praying that this partnership will continue. In conclusion, distinguished delegate, I wish to underline the importance of policy in promoting and protecting heritage and culture and tangible and intangible. Good policy is, is, is the basis for a robust and sustainable heritage sector. Policy gives the directives, policy sets the parameters, policies elaborate the action, policy define the funding mechanism for heritage and cultural sector. Policy outlines human resources needed for the management and the preservation of culture. This is why all our efforts are needed to ensure that our cultural industry and heritage assets are sustained by an updated inclusive policy guidelines. Thank you. Thank you to the Minister of Gambia. Now it is a moment to listen the Minister of Culture of the hosting country of Mexico, Your Excellence, Ms. Alejandra Frausto Guerrero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you to our sisters and brothers, Brazil, China, Gambia, Mexico, Russian Federation, South Africa. I want to welcome you all. Before it was the symbol of exclusion, this was the private tennis court. Now the entire world is united here. Thank you and welcome you all. In four minutes, we decided to choose one topic related to new policies that are implemented in Mexico to build a peace. As we have lived it in Mexico, I want to reproduce Cassandra's words. She's a 14-year-old girl from a complicated area in the periphery of the city, and it says, society is breaking up and everyone wants to look for their own interests. There are always social classes, wars that are not ending. I I want to tell youngsters that, that culture and arts is a way of expression, is not a waste of time. It is the binding element that can unite this fragmented society. Our President López Obrador, humanists receive a broken country because of the presence of violence and corruption. After several decades of a neoliberal government, what it was easier to possess than building up, which resulted in an overwhelming and quality and an increase of violence. The violence broke up a generation. It produced boys and girls that didn't know about peace. Now, under this transformation, live in Mexico with this current administration, this is where violence is happening, but we're trying to build peace through culture. For the sake of all, for the poor, this is the guideline that we have in the country for the last four years, because there is no peace without justice, and peace is built up every day. How can we do that? Through community culture, a government program led by the culture ministry, and that is the alternative that Mexico has in those spaces where there has been more violence and that has been left back. And why to deal with the young, youngsters? Well, people in those areas have a lack of opportunity and are the ones that are making them to be criminals. They are the core of our attention. And we need to provide alternatives to childhood and youngsters to take them out of the road of having short life, and the art and community has a great power. Could be through music, an orchestra, choir, theater, circus, photograph, film, painting, in order to transform their days. Childhood and youth, they learn how to make community. They know that they can transcend by creating and expressing. Based on art, the fear, anguish, and happiness, and hope can be represented. The human being from the moment of its birth up to death is also recognized because of culture and gives them a sense of belonging, the adrenaline to be on the stage. Unfortunately, this is also given by violence. And, and let's be strategic to build up cultural policies. Let's have a sense of urgency in this. I'm just showing you several examples. Yesterday, you heard the theater group of Canasin in Yucatan. 
one of the places with the most highest violence in the family because of alcoholism. They were part in the opening ceremony yesterday by showing also these performing arts. Probably some international newspaper presented children that are having weapons. And this happened in an area because of these war against drug trafficking. There was a self-government in the community closed its doors. Children have to change and exchange their weapons for puppets, employments, and they are building a more just world. Today, we are building up a different future based on culture. I want to invite you to build up the reconciliation in peace through this extraordinary power that we have in our hands. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Minister uh, of Culture in Mexico. Now I would like to give the floor to the excellent Minister Sergi Orbiglim from Russia. Participants of the conference, I would like to congratulate you and to welcome you. We want to thank all of you on behalf of the Russian Federation. I want to thank the Secretary of Culture in the Government of Mexico for organizing this conference. This is the continuation of those conferences that have been organized by UNESCO and is an area to have an open dialogue taking into account the agenda of the conference and the 50th anniversary of the conference of 1982, I would like to speak about the cultural policy of the Russian Federation in the international environment. Russia, it is a country that has been through a difficult road in a historical and long road. It contributed to develop values in the lives of the Russian society and being a key part of the world culture and participating also in those processes uh, to build up uh, cultural policies and to have an objective perception of our country abroad and also being part of the world culture. One of the keys of the cultural policies is the right to have access to cultural goods. Our country grants rights to other countries to present their cultural manifestations stations in different cultural events that are taking place in our country for our foreign colleagues. We respectfully accept music, theater, and art from other countries, but unfortunately, we don't find understanding in all the countries. We face some cases of uh, Russian artists and culture to be dis discriminated, the cancellation of our ballet performances, and also also the destruction of some monuments and erasing the cultural memory of Russia. Our country, in our country, culture has also been politized. And on behalf, we have heard that on behalf of different ministries. A cultural genocide against Russians in Russia, and that is something that we're sorry about, and we're deeply concerned by that Russia constantly supports this careful attitude to preserve the cultural heritage and also freedom in the creation of culture. Russian museums have excellent and unique collections. We have collaboration in the area of museums in the Russian Federation. It allows citizens of many countries to witness historical and cultural goods, and that contributes to expand the cultural heritage and the preservation of this cultural heritage and many sites of interest that call the attention of tourists around the world. 
In Russia, we have volunteer programs to preserve historical and cultural monuments. In 2010 and 13, supported by UNESCO, Russia funded the reconstruction of temples in Serbia, which are items part of this cultural heritage. And we also participated in the restoration of the cupola in Cuba, and also we have been actively participating to restore art and cultural sites in Syria. Intercultural and interreligious dialogue related to cooperation for international cultural cooperation under this economic turbulence and crisis, economic crisis, the Russian Federation supports the international world cultural assistance around the world. We are open to cooperate, but those that provoke us and that are using that platform in an attempt to cancel the rich culture of Russia and the cultural values of Russia. Thank you very much for your attention. Now we have from South Africa, Your Excellency, Mr. Emmanuel Nikoshati, Mafewa Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and greetings to all. I bring you fraternal greetings from the government and the people of South Africa. <coughs> the economic contribution of culture to sustainable development can't be overemphasized. The central role that cultural policies play in realizing 2030 agenda for sustainable development, reaffirming uh, culture as a global public good alongside health, economy, and human rights. This is also evident in the work done by the United Nations in our common agenda and uh, the African Union Agenda 2063, building the Africa we want. We acknowledge the role of cultural policies uh, play as an enabler and driver for sustainable development. The cultural sector has always been acknowledged as a critical factor in fostering identity through heritage building, social cohesion, part of education, and for intrinsic values uh, of enjoyment. <clears throat> for us to talk renewed and strengthen cultural policies, the South African government uh, decided that the best way to deal with this matter is through research. We base our policies on research and development. And as a result, our Department of Sport, Arts and Culture in 2015 uh, established a, a research arm, the South African Cultural Observatory. And this is what gives us a clear picture of what is to be tackled as we move forward. For instance, during this period of COVID-19, one of the things we, 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 we learned is that in different domains of uh, cultural and creative uh, uh, industry and economy, design and creative services uh, contributed 32% uh, to the CCI overall uh, in the country, followed by audiovisual and interactive uh, media. And this for us, what it says is that uh, we are going to succeed in ensuring that uh, our country uh, is playing its role in the cultural and creative sector, and we take cue uh, from evidence-based uh, approach. To that extent, one of the things which is coming out of this research is the fact that currently, uh, research is pointing to us that we need uh, to ensure that artists and creatives generally monetize their work, not just entertainment. Uh, two, that the future for arts, culture, and heritage and creative uh, industry and economy uh, generally lies in digitization. That uh, it's only when we do that and ensure that all over the world the IP uh, of uh, creatives is protected. Um, the uh, areas of royalties, uh, the areas of copyright becomes important for all of us to ensure that 
we indeed live to the expectation of what, what needs to be done, particularly in this area. I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank the organizers and say to the organizers that we are on the path as a country of reviving the sector through the monetization st strategy and ensuring enhanced arts, culture, heritage, and sport tourism. And in, uh, to that effect, our country will be able to contribute to the continent and the world in ensuring that the cultural and creative sector prosper in the world. Thank you very much, program. Well, thank you very much, Minister, for your participation. Now, we will have His Excellency Ahmad Padagaki, representative from the Islamic uh, Republic of Iraq. Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank Ms. Audrey Azoulay, the Honorable Director General of UNESCO, for all her efforts in organizing the second conference of ministers of culture held under the banner of management of UNESCO. And I also would like to thank the host country, especially Her Excellency Alejandra Frausto Guerrera, Honorable Secretary of Culture of Mexico, of his great conference which for many years has contributed <coughs> valuable efforts toward the revival of cultures with the cooperation of UNESCO. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, Mr. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, in his speech at the 76th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations, raised six major points in decision-making to break out of the world current critical situation, the first of which was to find a way to restore trust and hope in the world. Maybe one of the ways to find a solution to the current unsettled situation in the world is to promote cooperation for a mutual and better understanding of cultures, which can play a significant role in this regard. By doing so, we will succeed in advancing unity and peace. This will be a unique opportunity for everyone to benefit from including the spiritual heritage of different nations. We believe that with an intelligent combination of hope, spirituality, and justice, we should be able to overcome and find a solution to the current challenges. The year from the 2013 to 2022 were designated by UNESCO as the international decade for the rapprochement of cultures, and of course, effective measures have been taken by countries in this regard. We are in the last year of this decade, and on behalf of the Islamic Republic of Iran, I'd like to propose a model for peace and sustainable development, a strategic plan entitled Sister Cities of Borders with Neighboring Countries to synergize and develop cultural and social relations, which uh, should be placed on UNESCO's agenda so that green and productive lines appears on the borders, benefiting from the cultural capacities and mutual respect for ethnic groups to preserve our, our tangible and intangible cultural heritage will help in the development, dignity, and dynamism of nations. We hope that next year, Effective actions will be taken in the framework of sister cities of borders with neighboring countries with an approach that pays attention to the original cultural foundations with a view to a realization of justice and sustainable development in the hope that the first necessity steps will be taken towards strengthening peace and sustainable development, which is the uh, utilization of the valuable capacities of the culture and art of nations. All nations should have a sincere dialogue with their neighbors by using this easy practical model and help each other with the approach of, sol of solving problems while respecting each other. We believe that in the flourishing of peace, cre creativity and initiatives in nations will gain more speed and peace we return to the nations. 
Excellencies, dear colleagues, the last part of my speech concerns preserving and enhancing spirituality and protect, uh, protecting the privacy of the family against the tra threats of cyberspace. The Islamic Republic of Iran wishes for a world full of peace and tranquility based on dignity and expanding relations with other countries with continued respect for independence and equal rights. Uh, by believing in this, we can build a peaceful world and see a bright future, God willing. Thank you, muchas gracias. Right now, we will give the floor to two observers who are also part of this panel. Then, as you know, the organization of this conference also gives space to observers that belong to international organizations, NGOs, and civil society. Therefore, I would like now to introduce Ms. Lubna Mariam, who is the artistic director of Shadhona of the Center for Advancement of South Asian Culture. Welcome. You have the floor, ma'am. Your Excellencies and esteemed participants, greetings from Bangladesh. Also, thank you, Mexico. Thank you, UNESCO, for this extraordinary meet on culture. Today, though, I would humbly like to draw your attention to the fact that for centuries, indigenous communities in Bangladesh, like elsewhere in the world, have been safeguarding cultural practices based on diverse knowledge systems, all with their own resources. The need of the hour is the constitution and recognition of an ecology of knowledges, including the beliefs, opinions, magic, ideology, intuitive or subjective understanding, even spirituality within these indigenous communities. Thus, acknowledging the idea of an epistemological diversity of the world while recognizing the existence of a plurality of knowledges beyond scientific knowledge. Given the crisis of modern values and the ongoing global ecological disaster, instead of privileging the West and its distinctive notion of progress and civilization, there is an urgent need for a dialogue between the various systems of knowledge or knowledges. This is a dialogue between different cultures that are set on an equal standing, an intercultural dialogue in which knowledge is understood as interknowledge. A dialogue conceived in such wide terms cannot be termed anything other than an ecology of knowledge, one that replaces the monoculture of the dominant epistemology of the North and that allows and promotes a real intercultural dialogue. Recognizing these practices with simultaneous budgetary allocation to fund them can lead not just to conserving knowledge, but also to empowering these communities. Muchas gracias. Thank you for Lumna Marium participation. And also right now we have the participation of international education represented by Mr. Jorge Antonio Alfaro Rivera. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Good afternoon. You all, ministers, colleagues, friends, I'm representing the International Education International with associates like the Union of Educators here in Mexico with the two and a half million members. We must create a citizenship 
that will be global, that will have this moral value as demanded, demanding that culture to be at the core of cultural and educational policies. We have this great commitment as workers of education to generate a strategic objective related to sustainable development and culture. As teachers based on our schools around the world, we wanted to introduce strategies and different actions for knowledge, diversity, inclusion, care, and promotion of our cultures. Together, students, teachers, professors, union movements, civil society, and all of you, and ministers, and your governments, we must all work together to be working based on culture and to acknowledge diversity, human rights, inclusion, and culture for peace. We consider that it is necessary to decolonize culture and unite it to defend our ancestral legacy, to take care of them, protect them, and also to recover our own historical memories, because that is what will be fostering the identity and the pertinence of our global village and peoples. It is time to reflect, but also it is time to act that is why in Education International, we are proposing for actions that are being executed at this time to work with students so that they can remember what are their cultural roots and therefore to foster integration, not only in our peoples, but with the rest of the world, to gather the best practices of the union and educational policies and to work on diversity and to disseminate them, to provide technolo technology to better train our teachers. Right now we have a guide for union members for the education that the effects of ecology can have impact in education. Culture is something that needs to be considered as a tart to be created in a time and space. And teachers, we are essential in order to achieve that goal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose Antonio. Now we would like to give the floor to the permanent representative of Germany in UNESCO who wants to have this replica right. Can you hear me? Thank you very much, dear friends, dear, dear colleagues. Um, we're speaking about high values, uh, about renewed and strengthened uh, cultural policies. However, the Honorable Vice Minister of the Russian Federation uh, spoke about cultural genocide in Russia against Russians. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make clear that at this very point, and I, I use conservative figures, in Ukraine, 18, 80 religious sites, 13 museums, 36 historic buildings, 180 sites since the beginning altogether, 33 buildings with cultural activities, 17 monuments and 10 libraries have been damaged or destroyed. To speak about cultural genocide about, the, about Russians is not appropriate at, and I, we all condemn by all means this bloody invasion in Ukraine with all the, with all the crimes committed in this context, rape, killing, extra-legal killing and all the destruction of cultural sites. This has to be said in this room. This has to be said in this conference. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. And in this way, we will close this panel. Thank you for your attendance and your participation. Uh, we have one more participation, the representative of the UK. Hello. I will keep this short as it's only one minute, but I would like to echo our thoughts and words from our German colleagues. Russia cannot talk of its cultural heritage, protection and development when it conducts its illegal war against Ukraine and deliberate destruction of its cultural heritage, which is in direct violation of UNESCO's protocols, conventions, declarations. These are the facts as shared by my German colleague, as verified by UNESCO, and as of September the 21st, Russia has damaged or destroyed 192 cultural sites in Ukraine. Only when Russia ends its invasion of Ukraine can we engage in meaningful dialogue about sustainable development for culture, 
for everyone in the world. We want to thank the words of the representative of the UK, and since we have had two replicas before the participation of the Russian Federation, now we would like to give the floor, sir. We are not destroying cultural objects. That is a lie. That is not true. Our colleagues that are using our cultural platform to express that for their dirty political perspectives, I have nothing else to add up. And so, colleagues, if you want so, you can visit and you can see this by yourself. Thank you very much. In this way, we want to thank the ministers that were part of this panel. I think that we have many challenges before us for future years, and certainly that Mondiacul is leaving us these clear guidelines of where to move forward with reinforce and re-strengthen policies, the use of technology and education. Thank you very much.